Here we are with Mr. Gary Locke and, uh, at Chinese American Convention and he served as the 10th United States Ambassador to China and he's also the first Chinese American governor in U.S. history. So thank you for coming. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, you are, right now you are the advisor and doing the consultant for the policy and for the trade for locally, nationally and internationally, right? Right. So what's, what do you see about this trade war? Uh, what's the situation, you know, f between well, China and the United States? Well, first of all, uh, in a trade war, there are no winners. Uh, only the consumers and the workers of both countries will lose. The United States government and American businesses, and in fact foreign governments and foreign businesses around the world, do have legitimate concerns about the trade and economic policies of China. But using a trade war is the wrong way to approach it. It will actually hurt American companies, hurt American consumers, as well as the Chinese people. Thank you. And uh, you, you know, during when you were the ambassador in China, you actually built a trust between you and the President Xi Jinping, Hu Jintao, and Jiang Zemin. So for now, at this situation, if you are to give a suggestion to President Xi Jinping, and what would you say to him? Well, first of all, I think that the Chinese government needs to respond and address the deep concerns that foreign companies and foreign governments have about the trade and economic policies of China. Uh, I would encourage him to reach out to the world leaders and to start that dialogue and the negotiations to really address those com concerns and complaints. You are the one who have the deep understanding for the complicity between China and the United States, especially in the trade and other political issues. So if you are to give a suggestion to President Donald Trump, what would you see? I would say that uh, our trade relationship benefits both the people of China and the United States. And there are millions and millions of jobs in the United States that depend on that trade. And his uh, tariffs are going to hurt the American consumer. They're going to hurt the American worker. And this is the wrong way to go about it. He should be sitting down with the Chinese to talk about the real issues, the real concerns that he has, and American companies have, uh, with, with uh, China. I wish that he could listen to you. Well, uh, unfortunately, he's not listening to not even some of his closest advisors. That's really interesting, right. So uh, actually, you know, when you were in China and you are the one to find the air pollution and all those things, and for all these years, have you noticed a change of China? Well, I've noticed that the Chinese people are very aware of the pollution. Uh, they, don't, they no longer believe that it's only fog. They now know it's pollution. Uh, and the awareness by the Chinese people and their demand for action has forced the Chinese government to respond, to also acknowledge that it is a very severe pollution problem that is hurting the livelihood, the health and safety of the Chinese people. Millions and millions of Chinese people die prematurely because of the air pollution and the environment. And it's causing the Chinese government to try to respond. Uh, of course, uh, China is doing a lot in terms of reducing the reliance on coal, uh, moving to solar and wind power, nuclear power as well. But at the same time, they're still building a lot of coal power electricity plants, and that's bad. Uh, for the environment and bad for the health of the people of China. They have moved some of the industries, the polluting industries, away from the big cities, but when the wind blows, it goes right back into the city. So uh, it's not enough just to move some of these dirty factories away from the cities because it's still in getting into the air. So what can China learn from the United States in this issue? It's actually, uh, they can learn that in America, uh, taking care of the environment is actually good for business. Uh, a clean environment will attract more foreign investment to China. It will reduce the cost of the Chinese government in taking care of the health of the Chinese people. Uh, and um, they will find that cleaning up the environment actually creates jobs for the Chinese people. And it's, they will also learn, as we learned in the United States, the hard way, that it's better to spend a little bit more money up front on environmentally friendly technologies than to do it cheaply and then to have to come in five or ten years later take everything out and install higher cleaning and better equipment in the long run taking care of the environment saves you money exactly so uh, that's a very good suggestion so what can United States learn from China well there's a lot that both countries can learn from each other 
especially in the education field. Uh, the Chinese are very good at emphasizing math and science to the young people at early ages, elementary school and high school. But the reason that you have almost 300,000 Chinese students studying in America every single year and why America is the number one destination of foreign students from around the world is because our colleges and universities emphasize not memorization, which is what they do in China, but American colleges and universities emphasize critical thinking, analytical thinking. And that, that is really the foundation for uh, all future success. You can memorize things and you'll forget it five or ten years later. You don't need to memorize everything because you can now look it up over the internet. But teaching students how to think, how to analyze, will prepare them to address and confront the new challenges, the new technologies of the future. Talking about students, uh, there are many Chinese uh, students, um, you know, uh, studying in the United States. But President Trump recently said that all the students, Chinese students, are spies. Actually, you know, they had a good education here. And how can we keep them, keep the, the talents here? Well, that's why I, I very much disagree with President Trump. He does not uh, understand that the strength of America comes from our diversity of people and wave after wave of immigration. All of his policies now are to cut down on immigration. And, and the Chinese people here in America think, oh, President Trump is only talking about illegal immigration. No. He's talking about cutting family reunification as a method of immigration into the United States. He's talking about drastically reducing the number of Chinese students that he can even come to the United States to study. He's talking about kicking out even um, Chinese people who have green cards in America if they suddenly have to use government benefits. Let's say suddenly a spouse dies or they, uh, they lose their job. Even though they've worked in America, lived in America for 30 years and have been paying taxes, but for some reason they never got a U.S. citizenship. They just kept their green card. President Trump says if you apply for food stamps or Medicaid, we will deport you. Now that is, that is really going to hurt the Chinese people because there are so many Chinese in the United States who, for whatever reason, never got their U.S. citizenship, have a green card, permanent residence, but uh, have been working and paying taxes. And maybe their, their wages were not very high. And if suddenly they get ill or their husband or wife dies and they don't have enough money to support them, if they apply for food stamps under President Trump's proposal, it doesn't even need a, a, a has to. Be, he doesn't even need the approval of Congress. He's going to do this on his own. He's saying that those Chinese people will be deported. That's really the big concern, and it scares many people. So, as a someone that who has a knowledge and wisdom, and how can you help this uh, situation? Well, that's why we need organizations like uh, UCA, United Chinese Americans, to stand up, and and uh, voice their opposition to all these policies, uh, to be politically active, to elect uh, members of the Congress or the state legislature or the governor that will understand the concerns, the priorities of Chinese Americans, Asian Americans, immigrants. And, and we all immigrants need to stand together. Uh, President Trump is attacking Hispanics, Latinos, Muslims, and we think, oh, well, He's only going after illegal immigration. No, he's also going after the Chinese. And we need to stand up to that. We also need to elect more Chinese and Asian Americans to elected office. People who understand our issues, understand our immigrant history, our contributions to America, uh, and who value diversity. We need more of those in our city councils, in our state legislatures, as governors, as members of Congress, and hopefully maybe someday President of the United States. We are going to have the midterm election uh, recently. So what is the most important issue that the uh, Asian American community need to know? We need to go out and vote. And we need to vote for people who will stand up to President Trump. Not many. Not many people dare to stand up. Right? Well, that's look what happened to the Jewish people in Germany. Nobody stood up to what Hitler was doing. And they said, well, he's only talking about the Jewish people. I'm not Jewish. It doesn't affect me. All right. Look what happened in our early history of the United States. The Chinese were not allowed to come into the United States. And then even if 
the, the Chinese that were already here or the Japanese or Filipinos, they were not allowed to own land. And people say, well, that, that was a long, long time ago. Those laws banning ownership by foreigners in the United States were still laws up until 1940, 1950. And then we see all the discrimination, uh, uh, FBI investigations of Chinese scientists. Uh, they don't do a thorough investigation, and then they find out that the facts were wrong, but they've already been humiliated, arrested, handcuffed in front of their co-workers, even when they have been found not guilty, or even when the government says, oh, we made a mistake, they don't even get their jobs back. So don't think that it's not going to happen to us, that it only happens to other people, that the debates on immigration only affect illegal people, Hispanics or Latinos or Muslims. No. Do you know that 10% of illegal immigrants in the United States or illegal undocumented people in the United States are Chinese? 10%. These issues affect us. Yeah, we should all stand up and let our voice be heard, right? We, we need to stand together with other minority groups and other interest groups because what's happening to them is easily and is already beginning to happen to the Chinese. Thank you so much. And this right. show is called Innovation Dialogue. So the last question is, what is innovation by your definition in one or two sentences? Innovation is constant change, uh, creativity, uh, just new things. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Let's All take right. a picture.